All right, today's question is, can COVID-19 cause iron deficiency? An individual is wondering, you know, did they get COVID and then turn it, you know, like they're wasting iron everywhere. I've been getting this question a lot. So if you look up symptoms of long COVID and iron deficiency, you'll find that they're quite similar. Uh, even though one is literally this, you know, inflammatory process uh, and the other is a nutritional deficiency. So while I would not say COVID-19, that, that infection, or long COVID cause iron deficiency, they can surely affect iron metabolism. And there's a lot of literature uh, bearing this out now. So, you know, the strong inflammatory response that comes along with COVID uh, increases that peptide hormone called hepcidin, which is the main player in regulating iron. So when hepcidin is high, the ability of the body to absorb iron, it's gonna go down. You know, as well as, you know, iron is trapped in white blood cells called macrophages and in liver cells, which leads to decreased circulating iron levels uh, when hepcidin is up, when inflammatory activity is up. So if you were borderline iron deficient or iron deficient when, when COVID showed up, then your symptoms of iron deficiency will likely be exacerbated. Whether that's purely COVID or it's the iron part, uh, you know, it's hard to say. But iron is essential for viral application. You know, it is hypothesized that SARS-CoV-2 may actually disrupt iron metabolism in people so as to favor, you know, its own survival, its own capacity to replicate. You know, the body, in its wisdom, then goes and sequesters iron, like, like I mentioned earlier, into these macro macrophages, these white blood cells, and into liver cells, basically in, in an effort to starve the virus. So... Another way that COVID can affect iron balance is related to altered gut bacteria balance. So this is uh, also thought to impair absorption uh, of iron as there's, you know, just this chronic low-grade inflammation that, that persists and can damage the intestinal lining, which uh, would further would literally, you know, reduce our ability to absorb iron and a host of minerals, uh, even, even B vitamins. So as you can see, for the most you know, it's not likely that they need to take a bunch of iron, but rather that we want to decrease the inflammatory load, balance the gut flora, heal the intestinal lining, and, and trying to, to override, you know, the body's natural survival mechanism by, by taking a bunch of iron, like I've discussed previously, is only likely to perpetuate the gut irritation, the bacterial imbalance, the just overall, you know, inflammatory irritation going on. And, and hep C will probably just go up higher. So some people do find taking iron helpful, you know, even for a short season to help them get out of a, a depleted state, uh, you know, when they had an infection. And in these cases, you know, taking a physiological dose of iron in a whole food form, you know, that's not going to disrupt your bacterial balance. You know, I definitely think it can be beneficial, and I and I've seen it be beneficial. So don't go overloading yourself on iron. Maybe, maybe your levels check, see where the iron saturation is at, see where that total iron binding capacity is at, see where your ferritin levels at. And uh, then decide, you know, okay, should I take a little bit of iron and, and recognize that if you get the inflammation down, well, the body's capacity to absorb and retain iron and then even take that iron that's in the liver cells, in the macrophages, it's gonna be able to liberate that for use. So then you're gonna have more iron available. All right, Dr. Matt here. If you have questions, comments, let me know. Talk to you guys later.